Hi, I'm Laurel from Kids for the Bay and I worked at Kids for the Bay summer camp last summer. And one of my favorite days from summer camp last year was when we had a group come with reptiles, including a tortoise and a gecko and a snake. And we got to really look up at the animals close and touch them and experience that because I really love animals. And today I'm going to read a story called Verdi by Janelle Cannon. Um, and it says it's also the creator of Stella Luna, which is another one of my favorite books. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the trees leave, she called to her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Verity dawdled. He was proudly eyeing, eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Verity ventured into the treetops to look for them. Unlike, or Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verity peered at their droopy green bodies. It's not too polite to stare, chided Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taken nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. I surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you? asked Verity. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whined Aggie. If I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi, Verdi tapped a tune with his tail as he waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them. And he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verdi slipped away. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired, Dozer growled. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not only lazy and boring, they were rude. At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one of the branches with his tail and another with his little snake jaw. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. Shot through the sky. From a distance, the greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. Aggie nodded. He'll, he's likely to put an eye out on a branch, Umbles moaned. He may not live to turn green. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. Cack, he gasped. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle and I'm still turning green. He raced down to the river, grabbing a mouthful of rough leaves. Verdi flung himself into the water. If I can't run this green off, I'll scrub it off, he thought. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder cruising the murky death depths. Yum, the old fish hummed, lunch. Before the fish could haul Verdi under, the frightened snake bit him in the nose. Ah, poo! With a blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Verdi into the air. Slapping under the soggy shore, Verdi skidded out of reach. Woof, that was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloopy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. It sure beats being green. He left the mud on. But the soft brown mud uh, dried, onto a hard gray sh <laughs> dried into a hard gray shell and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the stiff stuff cracked off in jagged chunks 
As each piece fell away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Verdi. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the tree. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi star startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with the delight. Sure, the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to earth. Whippity-whappity, whip-whap-wham. Plummeting through the trees, Verdi landed in a crooked, crooked sprawl along a log in the forest floor. He couldn't move. Help, he croaked. As usual, the greens had been watching Verdi's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this, Umble said, shaking his head. Maggie sighed. Lucky, lucky thing he's got two good eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safer place where they could watch him watch over him while he healed. Neatly splintered to a branch, or splinted to a branch, Verdi had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the forest floor, Ribbon asked. Quick as lightning, answered Aggie, and I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller then, you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Umbles bragged, wild boar were no match for me. Verdi was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed, crashed just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then, then old Umbles here nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life. A warm perch, a little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. The greens rambled on about their days of glory, and Verity settled in on his branch. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, Looks like you are ready to go again, he carefully, he carefully untied Verity from the branch. You are welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. The three greens slipped quietly back into the forest. Verdi wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go, so he just stretched and stayed put and the, until the sun went down. He listened to the forest come alive. Here's a picture of some hidden animals. Do you see the frog and the hidden birds and insects? Time passed. The sun and moon turned into, tur took turns in the sky. Verdi marveled as the full moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched pac patiently as it slowly grew round again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Verdi became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures walked right by without seeing him. One fine morning, as Verdi basked in the sunshine, two small yellow stakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of that old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously doubt it. They're just like I used to be, thought Verdi. And, and I'm now what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me, he asked. With you, the yellows were astonished. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Verdi replied, though he was a little worried about putting his eye out. With practice, the three snakes performed a perfect triple eight, triple figure eight. Leaping and looping with his little striped friends, Verdi laughed. I may be, a, be big and very green, but I'm still me. And that's all. Thank you for joining me of this reading of Verdi. 
and I hope you have a great summer and that you can come join us for summer camp next year where we'll celebrate our 20th anniversary.